Greetings to everyone, Teacher Janet here. In this video, we're going to summarize and discuss the differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. The learning standards are that we should be able to compare and contrast continuous and discontinuous variation by giving the similarities and differences. Let's look at this important question. Compare and contrast continuous and discontinuous variation, eight marks. So variation is a topic that's very important for the exam. Let's try and answer this question. So when we are going to compare and contrast, we must state the similarities and the differences. Let's start with similarities. Both variations involve differences in characteristics among individuals of the same species. For example, in a group of humans, we can observe differences in height and weight, which are uh, examples of continuous variation. And for this continuous variation, we can observe differences in the eye color and the ability to roll the tongue, and also the blood group. Now, both types of variations contribute to the survival of a species. So survival means the, the ability to live on, continue to live on, and not become extinct, right? So every species is trying to survive in this world through the changing environment, through the changes in the environment, okay? Like the Biston, Betularia, or Peppered Moth. And we have found that uh, variation helped in the survival of the species, of the moth, when the environment changed, when there was air pollution. Okay? So, number three, both variations are influenced by genetic factors. For example, height and skin color are influenced by uh, genes that we inherit from both our parents. And blood group and eye color are determined by the genes that are passed down from parents to children. Right? Now let's look at the differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Firstly, the differences in the characteristic are not obvious or distinct. That means that the last for continuous variation. For example, for height of uh, humans, two people may look like they have the same height. Okay, but one may be actually 1.65 meters in height and the other is 1.66 meters in height. So the difference is not obvious or distinct. Now, for this continuous variation, the differences in the characteristic are obvious, very clear-cut, and distinct. Jelas, huh? So, when we look at a person, we can know whether he can roll or cannot roll his tongue. Okay, when he tries to roll his tongue, huh? you can see whether he can or cannot roll his tongue. It's very obvious. So, think of the 3D acronym here. Huh? For this continuous variation, the first D, differences, the second D, are distinct, the third D. 3D acronym. All right, to help you remember what discontinuous variation is. Next, intermediate characteristics. In continuous variation, there is the presence of intermediate characteristics, ciri per antara. For example, between the heights of 1.60 to 1.70 meters, there are many intermediates like 1.63 meters, 1.68 meters, and so forth, right? But for discontinuous variation, there are no intermediate characteristics. So, for example, there are those who can roll their tongue and those who cannot roll their tongue. Two groups only here. And there are no in-between characteristics that can half roll the tongue and so forth. Right? Now, next is the variation quantitative or qualitative. Continuous variation is quantitative. means that it can be measured. Usually, it can be measured. Huh? So, you can measure the height of a person. There's a value to it, right? To the height and then weight also and hand span too. Now, for... Uh, this continuous variation, it is qualitative, meaning that it cannot be measured and we just look at the feature or the characteristic and uh, that's that, all right? So free earlobe and attached earlobe. It's a qualitative uh, type of uh, property. Huh? Either the, the earlobe is a free earlobe, that means it's not attached directly to the, to the face here, and then the other is attached yellow. So it cannot be measured. This kind of characteristic cannot be measured. So this is one way that we can differentiate between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Usually continuous variation can be measured, but discontinuous variation cannot be measured. Examples of continuous variation are the height of humans, weight of humans, hand span, as shown here, the distance between the thumb and the last finger, right? and then length of foot 
and length of leaves in the plants of the same species. Now, examples of this continuous variation are ability to roll the tongue, eye color, blood group, fingerprint pattern, type of earlobe, whether free or attached, thumb hyperextension, whether the thumb can be folded or bent backwards or just straight up, and then color of seed in pea plant, whether green or yellow, right? Environmental factors. For characteristics that show continuous variation, they are influenced by environmental factors. For example, height and weight are affected by the type of diet that is eaten, right? Whether it contains nutrients or not. And uh, weight is also influenced by the, the amount of exercise that a person does. Now for skin color, skin color is influenced or affected by the amount of sunlight that a person is exposed to, right? So all these show continuous variation, the height, the weight, and the skin color. On the other hand, for this continuous variation, the characteristic is not influenced by environmental factors. Take for example, blood group. Blood group is determined only by the genes that is inherited from parents, right? And it's not influenced by any external uh, factor or environmental factor. How about eye color? So why is eye color considered discontinuous variation? So one way of looking at it is that we can say that eye color is not influenced by environmental factors whatsoever. It doesn't depend on, on the amount of sunlight that you're exposed to or any other environmental factors because eye color is genetically caused and determined by genes, right? The genes that we inherit from our parents. So that's why it's classified as a form of or example of discontinuous variation, whereas skin color uh, shows continuous variation. Okay, number of genes. In continuous variation, the characteristic is controlled by many genes or many pairs of alleles. For example, the characteristic may be controlled by a gene on chromosome number one, okay, the red chromosome. So this gene consists of a pair of alleles, maybe a dominant allele and a recessive allele, right? So then, but then the same characteristic may also be affected or influenced by the gene on chromosome number five, okay, which consists of another pair of alleles, and a gene on chromosome number 11, which consists of yet another pair of alleles. So for characteristics that show continuous variation, they are controlled by many genes from uh, different chromosomes, right? Where each gene consists of a pair of alleles. Now, for this continuous variation, the characteristic is controlled by just a single gene or a pair of alleles. Normally, there is one dominant allele and one recessive allele involved to control that characteristic. Okay? For example, like... Uh, the ability to roll the tongue or the type of earlobe. Okay, so in uh, biology, usually we say that uh, ability to roll the tongue is controlled by one dominant allele and the uh, recessive allele causes the person to be not able to roll his tongue, right? Next is the type of graph. For continuous variation, the graph produced shows a normal distribution curve or a bell-shaped curve. And it's in the form of a histogram. That means, we, for example, when we plot the number of individuals against the height, the range of heights, we must uh, stick all the bars together like that. Don't separate the bars, okay? So for the graph for human height, it's in the form of histogram. And if we take the midpoint of each uh, bar here, and join them together, it produces a bell-shaped curve called the normal distribution curve, okay? So most of the individuals are at the mean in the middle here, and there are fewer individuals at the extremes. Those, uh, the shortest height and the tallest height here. There are fewer individuals at these extremes, okay? But for this continuous variation, the graph produced shows uh, discrete bars that are separated Okay, and this type of graph is called a bar chart, right? Not a histogram, where the bars are plotted separately from each other, right? For example, the number of individuals against the blood group of a sample of people. Lastly, here's something that I'd like to share. 
It is called the tongue flower or the clover leaf tongue. So there are some individuals that can fold their tongue to form three lobes like this, like a star-shaped structure, right? Now, uh, it is very rare and in my teaching, I found only two students who can actually form the clover leaf tongue, okay? And they can show it themselves, huh? show that the clover leaf tongue in their mouth. So if you can do this, you may be one of those rare ones and it's probably genetic, right? Its cause is probably genetic. Comment below if you have this kind of uh, ability to form the star-shaped or tongue, uh, star-shaped tongue or the flower, tongue flower or clover leaf tongue. So goodbye for now.